Oh no! I don't get it. It's okay. You get it. <laughs> I was like, "Yes, Lord, come on with the cancellations." <laughs> Ooh, we going in it now. Just kidding. I don't know if you know this, but I'm black. Uh, am I good? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> He's with the best of them. And he's oh, one of my favorite men. <laughs> that that, that interest sounds like much more than who I actually am. <laughs> my guest of honor is from Marshall, Texas, but he represents Fort Worth too. He graduated from Everman High School and received a full athletic scholarship to play football at TCU. He's a bulldog turned horn frog that shares his love for football through training youth football players. It's been said that the color purple represents wealth royalty, creativity, and harmony. And my guest bleeds purple. He's a servant leader for the community and he's called to be a connector of people. He serves as a mortgage loan officer with Prime Lending and he's an entrepreneur dedicated to building a legacy that his wife and his four children will be proud of. He's a proud member of Cap Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated. <laughs> so when he said, Yo to the news. <laughs> so when he yells, yo, just know that he's saying what up, though. Today, my guest <laughs> honor is Mr. Johnny Fives. How you doing, bro? Uh, what's going on, baby? How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> good to see you. I'm, good to see you. You're looking good. Thank you. I'm trying I'm trying to get like y'all, you know. We trying to be glowing, you know. <laughs> Listen, all it is is this, you know, drinking your water and staying in your own lane. That's all it At, is. That is. Mind mm -hmm. your business. Minding your business. Will get you everything that you need. <laughs> a degree, a master's, you know, a doctorate. You know what I'm saying? As we, get, as we progress in this life and everything, stay in your lane. But I appreciate you having me for sure. No problem. So we gonna basically get started, like just talking about the long game because the theme of this season is think long game. So right. I want to start off by like establishing the baseline so that anybody that listens to this episode can like trace your footsteps, your footsteps in the sand. So if there were no barriers, no boundaries, nothing in front of you that was a problem, what is the dream and what would the dream be? Mm, that's a great question. So the dream would be helping uh, just helping others, man. Just being an asset to others to fulfill their needs and such, right? Uh, when I'm when I'm coming to find out in life is that you know servitude is everything. How yeah. how are you to do for other people, right? So when they were when they were doing that, it's like helping people find their purpose and such, or helping people um, to get to a a certain place where they probably couldn't do it themselves and such, right? And uh, I'm a testament of that. Um, I've, I've developed an attitude at an early age of like, I can do this and I can do it all by myself. Yeah. And uh, through, you know, through life's ups and downs, trials and tribulations, you end up finding out that, you know, God put a plug, he, he put a ram in the bush for a reason, right? So you're going to need some help along the way and everything. This, um, this, this, this life is meant to be, a, uh, a marathon, not a sprint, you know, and I know that's a analogy that's used all the time, but they're realistic, uh, realistically, you know, sometimes, man, you're going to need somebody to, uh, give you a, um, um, they're going to give you some grace. That's going to, you know, offer, you know, some help that's going to say, Hey, listen, I know you're tired. Let me take over. Let me do, you know, do what I can for you and everything. And it's, it's okay. It's okay to get help. I think that, you know, today in society, uh, we feel that, that, you know, we try to give this, this mentality of, I started from the bottom. I came from the mud and everything. Right. Right. <laughs> that, 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 that's not everybody's story. You know what I'm saying? It's not. Like bad, the riches and everything, but you know, it's, it's something where, you know, we, it's, it's a stretch out over time and everything. Right. So, uh, that's what, that's why I would say, man, uh, no, no holes bar. If, if the money, you know what I'm saying, the finances, everything good, stuff like that, man, I'll be doing really basically the same thing I'm doing right now is offering encouragement to people, reaching out to people, being consistent, making sure that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm one of those type men. I come from a big, big family, uh, a woman dominated family and such. So family gatherings are necessary, you know, still, you know, with my 35 years, you know, we have big family gatherings. We uh, pop on the phones, especially with technology now. 
like five, six, seven people be on FaceTime all at one time, just chaos, right? But <laughs> what, what, what that allowing taught me is, is that you serve other people, you care about other people, and the reward is always going to come back to you. Sometimes we get uh, focused on, you know, uh, what we can get or that instant gratification, um, but we don't we don't realize that we are planting the seeds with every soul that we touch. Then eventually, over time, there's going to be a harvest that's going to last us long, you know, longer than what we you know could ever think about and such, man. So that would just if I was if I no holds bar, I probably be doing the same thing I'm doing now, just helping folks and you know in in that manner. Look, that's encouraging though because like. The fact that you're saying that it would be the same lets me know what your heart posture is. And I think mm -hmm. that's super important because, I mean, your journey traveled has helped you to become this person and you're still becoming, right? It's right, not, you're right. not done growing. So you're still yeah. becoming. I'm, I'm still still coming. I'm still at That's the okay. Yeah. Look, and, no and that's, that's important though. Like knowing that you still, you understand that it's a continuous thing and that, that alone will help other people to see your journey and see how you've overcome different things. Like right. that alone is going to be inspiring to somebody. You know, you know, um, you know how like somebody that is like, have you ever seen a scenario or a um, um, uh, uh, somebody's climbing a mountain, right? Mm -hmm. And there's going, they going through all the rifts and the rocks, find the avalanches, all the stuff that a mountain. I never climbed a mountain before, but you know, <laughs> they going through all, all the stuff that you know goes through that, right? And they finally get to that 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 top of the mountain. Or the base at it, and like they stretching, ah, yeah, I made it, I made it. But then they look up, and the the what's the name? The fog clears another, you know, what I'm saying portion of the mountain that you got to keep on going, right? And that's what mm -hmm. life is, really. Life is just, you know, it is getting to that point. So with me being a, um, you know, originally from East Texas, I'm gonna rip it all day, Washington, Texas, to the day of me, Marshall, Washington, Shreveport, whatever you want to say. <laughs> me but i'm a uh i'm a i'm a forward baby i'm a forest hill baby actually to be exactly uh exactly so <laughs> um you know my my what's the name my story is uh a story that's still developing but it is a story that you can look back and you can just see god's favor over it and everything through the good and the bad you know right so um you know I started playing football and um, started playing football in this is great in in Texas in Texas term that's very late that's very yeah. late to start playing football and such and, for sure um, when I started playing I was horrible like terrible <laughs> terrible you know what I'm saying like scared of contact uh, it was just too chaotic <laughs> for me right but um, what ended up happening. Um, at that, the end of that year was uh, one of my guys, man. Uh, one of my guys ended up kind of testing my manhood. You know, he was just like, bro, I can run you over. You sorry. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And my, everybody kind of, you know, was agging it on. But like, what that did is, I was, I ain't gonna lie, I was scared. I was scared. Uh, but, <laughs> you know, we went heads up with each other, man. And then when I found out, like, oh, it really didn't hurt like I thought it would be. That kind of started a fire in me, right? To where, yeah, you know, I made varsity my freshman year at Everman, and that just, you know, lit me up, you know, and such, right? So to where, you know, I was able to, you know, earn a full scholarship to uh, TCU, Texas Christian University. Um, but uh, the, the biggest thing on that one is, is that, you know, of being able to start my journey of, you know, football, full, football is the vehicle and such, right? So I was able to start climbing the mountain. And when I was able to, um, you know, get awarded a scholarship, I received, I, you know, I got to a, a certain level on the mountain where I was just like, yay, congrats, not like that. But then the fall moved and it was just like four or five years <laughs> to, you know, keep going up that level. Right. So right. to where, uh, you know, to where it is, you know, now and the elevation that comes along with it. So I graduated. Um, you know, my playing career is something that I am I'm proud of. You know, um, it, it wasn't a, a, a top a top career, you know, but it's something that I'm proud of that I did. That I can look back and say that, man, that, you know, not a lot of uh, people will be able to experience the things that I've actually accomplished and everything, right? But 
You yeah. Know, um, quick, little to none stint in the NFL and everything. And, you know, hey, the real world is, you know, here, right? So, again, uh, through those four or five years, you work up the mountain and the side of the mountain get to the next level, graduating, and then it's the uncovering of another, you know, uh, another level and such. So, you know, uh, where I'm at now, you know, I'm happily married, um, about to be two years in May. Um, have four, four, clap three, four for five. that, man. Yeah, man, that's the journey, that's the journey. <laughs> man. But you know, God has blessed us, man, to still be holding strong. Um, I, I got five kids in total, man. I, I include my bonus son in, in there as well. But uh, you know, even with that, man, this you know, you know my story, you know it in depth. You've been with me since we were uh, we were young in the game and everything, so yeah, you know, it, it, it's, it's been an opportunity to sometimes you just got to really sit back and you know you got to just look at like you got to look and see how far you done came and start focusing on how far you got to go you know what i'm saying yeah because that's life and everything like if we were back in you know we were back at uta we we're back at tcu doing our our undergrad days and everything to Sit up here and say that <laughs> hey files is married with miss matt nah that's highly unlikely but, <laughs> you know, it's just really a true testament, you know, where with what, what God has, you know, done in my life and what he's continued to do in my life. And, you know, the best is really still yet to come. Like, the craziest thing is that, man, I don't accomplish so much, I don't did so much, but I haven't even tapped into what he really has for me yet. And I, and I guess... Seriously. That, yeah, that's really the excitement of my life. Like, it's going to happen one day. You know what I'm saying? We just, we just get the day closer every day. Stay close. Yeah. Look, the the good thing though, this is this is why I really wanted you to come on the show, bro, because mm -hmm. you said all of that to say I, I haven't even touched the tip of the iceberg, right? Right, right. But right. everything that you've been through, like the platform that he gave you, the fact that you had to go through adversity before you even got to the platform, mm -hmm. right? Um, and then all of the things that you've experienced have given it's giving you a point of view that a lot of people don't have right, so you've right. been able to like experience some things that people from where we're from traveling going out of the state like these things don't happen for people they just be like i'm from fort worth that's it yeah you know yeah. what i'm saying that's it that's so it. that's it but everything that you went through is has given you a point of view that's going to help you to help people that that's way beyond what you ever think right. like it's you you have only touched the tip of the iceberg but what you're going to be able to do with that experience and that knowledge that you gain is going to be way more monumental than playing in the NFL. Yeah. Um, so, like, I, I believe that sports give you an opportunity to become who mm -hmm. God wants you to be. He uses that to help you, like, cultivate you and give you life skills and things like that. Then the platform gives you an opportunity to be in front of people mm -hmm. and to proclaim his name and make sure that you know you give him the glory. All right. And then on top of that, after that, it gives you an opportunity to have that for lack of a better word, I don't want to say clout, but it gives you that credibility mm -hmm. so that when you do speak, when you yeah. do speak, people like understand like the journey traveled is real. I did what I did, but it was only because of him. Right. So I love that you already have that perspective that you know that the best is yet to come. So and you that's actually amazing. said something earlier, like when we first got on about being in the correct posture, right? Um, yeah. Posturing is, is so important and it's something that has... Um, become evident more in my life and everything is that sometimes man like when you when you're a collegiate athlete man you you are so structured everything is structured for you is planned out your classes are done you don't have to worry about you know you don't have to worry about planning anything out because it's already planned for you right and then mm -hmm. it's done you got to really adapt to like real life you got to understand nobody's going to wake you up nobody is going to call you see if you did this did that it is what it is right mm -hmm. and you know most athletes do struggle when after their post playing career because like they we we've been i'm not going to say baby but we've been catered to for so long to where yeah. once we get away from that it is so hard to pull it all back together, you know? So um, a lot of things, man, that God has, you know, for us and everything, we got to be in the correct posture to receive it. And, you know, it, you can kind of equate it to like being in the wilderness, right? It's like, you know, yeah. when, when uh, children of Israel were delivered from um, 
they were delivered from uh, Egypt and such, right? They turned an 11 day trip into a 40 year journey, right? A 40 year Ooh, journey, Lord and such, right? So, it, and it's simply because their posture was incorrect and such, right? So sometimes, man, I equate that to is that sometimes we delay our, our, our real our real blessings or, our, you know, the things that God, the calling that God has on our life. We delay that because our posture is not correct. And, you know, I can't talk about anybody else. I can only talk about myself. The only thing for yeah. this is that, man, like I probably delayed a lot of things in life because my posture wasn't correct and I want to do what I want to do. I created some situations that, you know, that are tough and everything that I still got to deal with today. However, you know, that's the favor of God to have the grace and mercy over your life and everything. And just being able to say, even though you're trying to mess up the plan, I still got a plan for you because I've already called you to that. You just got to get in the correct posture of uh, receiving it. You know, my mama always had a saying, uh, you know, one day you're going to get sick and tired of being sick and tired. One day. You know? Until you actually are t sick and tired of being sick and tired, you're going to keep on going through these ups and downs and, and these trials and tribulations, and you're going to cry. But when you get really mm -hmm. tired of crying and you get really tired of hurting, that's when you're going to make some changes in your life to get into the correct posturing. That's right. Mama mama is all the way right yeah. with that one. So let, mm -hmm. let's let's talk about mama real quick, because, you know, you just, you said earlier that it was more of like a, a female based household, like you were raised by a lot of women. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. what kind of core what core values and things did you learn from being around so many dynamic women? Like, um, tell me about that. So with my mother, man, mother was a, um, a single parent and everything. Um, my dad divorced when I was young, probably about two, three or such like that. And um, we uh, migrated to the DFW area, specifically the Fort Worth area, when I was like seven or eight, something like that. Um, she she wanted to um, to start life over and everything, right? So I honestly would say that if she didn't have the, the gall to make the decision that she did, you know, me and you probably won't even have this conversation today. You know, me and you probably won't no. be acquainted with each other if she didn't choose to, uh, you know, make the moves that she made. So, like, I'm I'm forever grateful for, you know, old Mary Ann. I'm, I'm grateful for her because <laughs> of the fact that, you know, um, she is the reason why I, I am who I am today and the life that, you know, that I have and the people that, Surrounded now, she ain't responsible for the bad stuff I did, but you know, she, uh, <laughs> she she's all the way there. But uh, anyway, so um, what what she has taught me is like the work ethic, right? Work ethic and focus. Like there was uh, nothing that my mother couldn't accomplish and everything because she was uh, summa cum in her class from Wiley. She's a mm. um, she's a Wiley college graduate. Um, she's also a uh, I don't want to say it wrong. I forgot they chapter down there, but she's a Delta as well. So like, um, I'm a Wiley baby and everything. If that yeah. <laughs> but uh, for what I saw, she she raised the standard and everything. Like she didn't sell nothing less than you know A's and B's coming into her home. Um, you know we was you know able to maintain ourselves. You know we were very disciplined and such growing up, and that's just because like my mother taught me that. And those things are some of the, you know, some of the things I, I teach to my kids as well. I don't, you know, I don't do it as, 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 as forcefully <laughs> as, you know, I was when I was younger, but those things that were. It's a different time. Yeah, it's, a different, it's a different time. It's, it's okay. It's, yeah, that's, you know, that's a whole nother show for another day. <laughs> but uh, being around, man, being around my family and everything, like I have, uh, if I have uh, six, seven aunts uh, compared to like two or three uncles and everything, right? But my family a whole, man, is is we all love. We care about one another and everything, right? Like if we tell you we love you, no, like we really mean it and everything, right? So, you know, I've always, it doesn't matter, friend, foe, whatever, man. If I tell you I love you, dog, like it's, I'm always going to feel that way towards you. Whether we talk every day or we don't talk for some years, I'm always going to feel that for you. Um, but just just being around them and just being, you know, like my aunt, my mother and my aunts, man, they always made the impossible happen. Like, you mm -hmm. just be like, 
wait, what? How did that happen? But like when they put their brains together and say, you know what? Nah, hey, we're going to delegate. Hey, you do this, you do that, you do this, and you know, and we're gonna bring it all together. So uh, I get I get that from them of like you know that that faith of a mustard seed. I just need yeah. I just need an idea. If I have an idea, I can place it together and such. And that's like you know down to my core. I, I tell myself that I'm a um, you know along with me being a loan officer and along with me you know along with the the business avenues I have, I'm a serial networker, man. Like I'm a I'm a connector, and that's becoming a major part of not just business but life for me because uh, of the fact that that's that comes back to me serving people because the the connector and the places need to be together and everything because not just simply because of uh employment opportunities or such like that because people need that but like initiatives they need to be get driven and everything right like what i've learned is is that man like yeah i can do so much by myself and everything but we can go further when we go together right so you know yeah. i'm i'm all about having passionate you know meaningful conversations per day you know with folks on you know what we're trying to get accomplished and what we're trying to do and and like i said the 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 good thing about it is is that man i haven't even got started i when i say i haven't got started for sure i haven't got started so but i i i have to posture myself to get to that to that realm because i will walk around with like 30 to 40 ideas in my head and i just be so clouded to like i don't do anything at all because i'm overwhelmed but like uh one of my good friends told me um Hey, you just going to have to focus in on one thing at a time and take it yourself. And, you know, whatever you do or whatever, you know, if you, you're you you're pulling somebody's time or anything, you got to make sure that you're adding uh, substance, you know what I'm saying, to whatever you're doing, right? Yeah. So that's the thing that I focus on, being a a, a, uh, a figure of asset, you know, a figure of substance. So it's like, if you give me your time, if you can... Because everybody don't. Nobody has to support you. Nobody has to be behind you and such like that. And in this world, we believe that, you know, sometimes we're entitled to believe that it's all just because who I am. Like, nobody has to support me because I'm, I'm from Fort Worth or I'm from East Texas or that I play football. Like, nobody has to care about that. Nobody has to care that I'm a worse lender and I'm trying to take care of my family. I'm trying to bear Nobody has to. But, um, the good thing is, is that if these people are giving their time, at least try to add some type of value to them and such to where they're not going to remain the same after they met you. Um, my, my daily prayer is, is that if anybody has the chance to experience me within the day, like, you know, God, let them see me. I mean, let them see you and me, you know, right? Let them experience mm-hmm. that and such. So, you know, I, I it's, a, it's a daily thing, man, but like, I, 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 I guess it's it's one of the things where when you become intentional about your real purpose and you become intentional about what you're trying to give to people, like, um, for example, on social media, um, I, uh, I'm a numbers guy, you know, I'm a, I'm a growing numbers guy, like, cause I deal with it so much. But the thing that, that tripped me out is that I, um, I call Facebook kind of like the, like the all around family reunion. Because I got so many different yeah. networks that are squished into one, right? And like I got business, family, sports, all kinds of things squished into one. So I if I post on a day, like I got to give like four or five different posts, like right? I got to give a, a, a post of positivity to encourage somebody that's probably going through something. I have to get a, a business with mortgage and let them know, hey, these are your options, what you do. I'm going to have to do something fitness wise and everything because I'm always in the gym or I'm going to have to get something that's kind of like some comedic relief or somebody can tap into and we can have just like the open dialogue about. Right. And that's four different narratives that I'm doing in a day, but that's going to be four different engagements that I'm going to have. So it's man. So when you start, you know, collecting data and everything, you know, within your purpose and everything, you start collecting data as far as like, you know, who you, who do you uh, encounter and what they, what they get from you, you start knowing that, okay, every day or every day I'm going to have to, you know, say this, I'm going to have to do this. I'm going to somebody, you know, somebody's struggling. They're going to need, they're going to need a word. They're going to need a prayer. 
somebody don't want to go get in the gym. They're going to need to see this. Somebody don't know what to do when it comes to like a mortgage. Like they're going to need that. So uh, it's just, it's just all intentional and, it, and it, it's becoming, um, it's, it's becoming more and more strategic uh, about how I do. Um, I know, you know, the, uh, the comedian country Wayne, right? Uh, country Wayne yeah. said, um, he said on one of his, I think it was on like the um, Shannon Sharp podcast. He said that social media is my real estate, right? Social media is my real estate, and that's kind of essentially what I'm trying to get to and such, man. Like, um, you know, I'm just trying to be consistent in that matter. Yeah, he said something like, "I don't, I don't uh, print money. I print content right. or something." Right. He said like, "My content makes right. me like." I was like, "Yeah, that's true because like." we're we're like really multifaceted people like there are multiple parts of us and i'm glad that you've been able to figure out that you have multiple ways of connecting with people because a lot of people choose the one gift that's very like clear to them but you have multiple gifts that god gave you and he's gonna uh illuminate it a little bit more in the season that you're supposed to be using it in so right now it kind of it kind of sounds like he wants you to use your voice more now like he wants you to open your mouth more now and be, being a creative, like I can relate to you in that with when you have 30,000 ideas in here and you're like, I got to get them all done. Like Pokemon, I got to catch them all. Right. <laughs> but you <laughs> got to catch them all. But what we, what we have to learn is that in, in good timing, everything Correct. will be executed Correct. and you have to have strategy along with the gift and along with the vision. So hey, hey, uh, gotta, I think that that's super hey, important. You got to have patience, man. You got to have patience. Yes. Like, um, sometimes it's kind of like, I, and what, what, what troubled me in the past that I'm getting better at is that I'm trying to get out the, the lotto ticket mentality, right? Just like, all right, yeah. if I put this one, this going to hit, you know what I'm saying? Right. But it's all about consistency and everything, right. And putting out yes. and going back and getting the feedback and just, all right, all right. If I put something out, okay. And I watch it over a couple of days, like, um, why did it not get the engagement that I need from it? You know, did I not put a hashtag? Did I not say something that was a substance, like what it is? Or if something is hitting, what is, you know, what is what is bringing that engagement in and analyzing that and being, okay, one of my fears about speaking, and we talked about this before, speaking like i can speak all day i can talk all day but like man when you become you got to come confident in your voice and speaking and then i guess the the feedback the feedback is really what kind of had me standing on a lot of levels because i'm like man i don't want nobody to say nothing out off the wall to me bro because we'll we'll fight you know that like <laughs> i don't want that <laughs> but i mean it's a it's a part of it you know if um it's just like it's just like uh, uh, one of my one of my older brothers, man. He's uh, he just started his podcast, but he's actually doing content on YouTube. And he was just yeah. man. He when he posted the, the his first video, he he texted me. He said, "Bro, I'm so nervous." And this is Aww. a guy that you know is is well off. You know, he's very well spoken. Uh, former athlete, uh, played in the league a couple of years. And for him to tell me that, and we we kind of hold each other accountable, it's just the fact that man, it's just like, bro, like you got to take that risk and everything, right? Like, um, you know, God said, man, you got to take the first step. If you take the first step, I'll meet you along the way and everything, right? And most of yeah. us, we don't want to take the yeah. first step because the first step is like ah, and, and so what I what I notice even by myself is that okay, I'm starting to take a little bit from, you know, the things that I see and trying to calculate that in my mind on how I can, you know, impute, impute that information and put input that information, sorry. And put that information and then how yeah. can I come out with consistent stuff. So like now like on my videos or even on my lifting, it was so trash at, at the beginning. But it's okay. You know what I'm saying? Like I was just I was just yeah. recording it and I was just like, well, I like why, why my videos look so cloudy and dusty and everything, right? Well, I got a screen protector on there that I ain't cleaned in so long and all that, right? Okay, so <laughs> let's start that. I got me a new screen, I mean, a, a new little open lens. And I was like, well, you know, I'm recording in regular mode. Let me start putting my stuff in cinematic and everything, right? Let me start angling correctly. Let me start adding 
auditions in there mm-hmm. and such and start let me start doing voiceovers like i did i think i did my first little voiceover on the video today but it's just like hey if i like it cool you know what i'm saying if nobody else like it cool i gotta do that i gotta That's do it. it for me you know what i'm saying and somebody you do. somebody's you do. going to end up somebody's, it's going it's going it's going to help somebody it's going to help somebody mm-hmm. it is it is you know how they say you know culture says uh Culture says, like, I'm right. standing on business, but we standing right. on kingdom business. Right. That's what we doing. Like, we standing on kingdom business. So if that's true and we truly believe that, the only audience member that matters right. is God. So you're going to be held accountable for what he mm-hmm. told you to do. And at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what it looks like and how it hits when it comes to other people, whoever you're creating it for and whoever he intended for it to land on, it's mm-hmm. who it's going to land on. But you can't get better if you don't start you know like you gotta start and you can evaluate and adjust as you go but if you never start you'll never get better and you'll never build that confidence oh, even if it's better than so, sacrifice sacrifice and absolutely we, we that, it's better than sacrifice we think with the sacrifices that that's enough but like sometimes sometimes man we go through hard times because we weren't obedient obedient i can tell that for myself yeah i know clear as day i told me to me do too. this <laughs> and I be like, all right, bet. And I don't end up doing it. And then it get real dry. It get real dry real quick. You yeah. be like, hey, say it, dog. All right. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's, it's again, it's, he said, man, and I always, I love Psalms 23, right? Psalms 23. And Lord's, yeah. my, uh, Lord's my shepherd, I shall not want you make me right now to bring pastors and such, right? But it's always, that resonated with yeah. me when he said that is that you know he said that yeah do I walk through the valley of shadow of death uh, I'm not feeling you because you are with me right and yeah if yep. if you're if you're traveling you know what I'm saying if you're going through these moments and such and you you realize man you're not walking alone um man it's it's that's so powerful that's so powerful and so it is. you know sometimes man we gotta really break things down to like a layman terms like even when i'm praying before my day hey get with me you know what i'm saying i'm about to make this post i'm nervous about it but i'm gonna do it though you know what i'm saying like i'm going yeah. to like later on i'm gonna start you know I, I, need, I need to be more intentional about my tiktok reels and everything but like it is what it is and at the end of the day you're the the, the person on the other side of the phone and they you they never met you you never met them and it's either gonna be what? It's either gonna be like, hey, this is good, or hey, this is bad. And <laughs> keep on scrolling, right? And it is what it is. And you yeah. go on to the next one. So, man, if you can if you can overcome the mental block and the mental aspect of things, man, I think that, you know, that would it would be such a blessing, you know what I'm saying, for some folks for sure. Yeah. Look, it's you the only person right. holding you back. <laughs> At the end of the day, it's you and God, and everybody else is a bonus. Like that, that's it's really that's really how it is. And then like, I think like you just said, if you make it, make the content, you release it, you're already successful in the sense that that is success. You had an idea, it was planted, you executed it, you released it, right, you already right. won. And my- so it's about changing your perspective about it. At the end of the day, it. yeah. it's just seeds, right? So it's like, how many seeds can yeah. I throw down? You know, so because if I'm throwing seeds down, that gives me an opportunity to harvest, you know, more and everything, right? Like, we throw mm-hmm. a seed down and think that, okay, that's going to be the one. And don't get me wrong, it can be faithful to mustard seed, and you only need one seed. However, I mean, I like my yeah. chances if I got more than one. Right, like if I put two, I got fifty yeah. percent chance. If, you know, if I put three down, I got you know, I got this and so and so and so and so. Right, so you know, the chances that you know that I'm that I'm going to hit become greater, man, when I'm consistent upon the activity that I'm doing daily, and just making it sure it's a part of my consistency and my discipline and everything. And that's where my athletic background starts to take back into effect, is because. I start tapping back yeah. into that mindset of this is what I got to do. This is what I got to get accomplished, whether it's in sales, whether it's in marketing, whether it, whether it is in networking and such. I got to be intentional about being not just goal oriented, but being consistent upon making sure the activities, you know, every day, like, you know, in a week's time in the season, 
you got three or four days to practice, right? And then you got the game on Saturday. It's not, you know, Sunday, mm-hmm. play the game on Saturday, and then on Monday you're playing another game. You got to have time for, to prepare. So, you know, you, you go back and you go back and you, you look at film and you, you know, correct the wrong or you identify what you did wrong, mistakes, and then you talk it up for next time. So it's the same thing just in life and, and all that, right? Whatever realm that you're trying to do is that you, you know, do the action, go back to go back to the tape, you know, collect data, see what you did, you know, did you did right, did wrong, uh, see what you can do better at. And then from there, all right, implement it on the next go around and see if you can get a different turnout than what you had before. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, in sport in sports, when you make it your lifestyle, right? right? So it, it makes sense that you can simplify it down to just that <clears throat> just that point. Um, but in life, it's more like your lifestyle right. is your worship style. Because everybody thinks everybody thinks that like when you go to church, mm-hmm. you pray, you uh worship God at church. Um, that's just your worship, but it's not, it's your lifestyle right. and, the, and the way that you live. So I love I love the fact that you understand that it's like I have to be more intentional. I might not know everything or have everything at my grasp right now, but I know that God is in me and he's with me. So whatever I need, he's, he's gonna, going to hey, reveal man, it in the right he's time. He's going to do it, so, but he's not going to do it on our time. He's going to do it on his time. And his right. time is not, and, and this his time, his timing is not uh, something that we can even comprehend and such. Um, so like that old saying says that you may not come when you want it, but you'll be there right on time. And, and so you've been there right yeah. on time because he's like, dog, I've been waiting for you. But, yeah. you know, that's just, just comes to again, like, and uh, I'm not a person that's over religious and such like that. But, you know, what I come to find out is that, like you said, like what's in me is going to shine outward, right? And it's all about personal relationships yep. and such. So God done told myself up, but well, I done told myself for plenty of years, you know, going back and forth and like, no, nah, this ain't me, this ain't what I need to be doing. Like I'm a I'm a clubber, you know what I'm saying? I'm a I'm a be up and I'm gonna be in the streets and everything. It's like, nah, that, that ain't your life. That might be somebody else's life. That ain't your life, because I'll tell you that right early age. To life, so yeah, we spend a lot of time running away from our calling when you know we, we do. Yes, mm-hmm. we do. Yeah, he created us for it. I had this tattoo on my arm that says mm-hmm. "Win in the Dark," right? And I truly believe that, like, what we do in our quiet time and our private time is what we get to shine right. outside, right? And so, like, it sounds like for you, you've had mm-hmm. a lot of life lessons. You've been able to go through a lot of things and you've been able to like extract the value right. from your experiences. Um, I want to ask you, like, how does that play a part in like what you do when it comes to working at uh, working with prime lending? Because you're dealing with people as they're transitioning into their homes. Like that's a hard transition because, you know, they have things that they're trying to build and like your stuff may not um, be in, in place. Like, how do you help them b- based off? Like of I said, you got to you got to learn. Like I was talking to a realtor before we got on the phone and. Um, you got to line up with their with their goals. You know, you, sometimes you got to go meet people where they are. I mean, where they are and such, right? Like, uh, my job mm-hmm. is that you know I'm not a I'm not a, uh, a black loan officer. I'm not a minority loan officer, man. I'm a loan officer to help everybody. But you know, I love I love helping my people. You know what I'm saying? I love you know uh, teaching them such. But like my my clientele is is being diverse. I have million dollar clients. I done had, you know, people that make, you know, small amount of money and such, and they still been able to get into a home. Um, but, man, it's, it's mm-hmm. when you put somebody into a position where they never thought they would end up being, right? And something that they, they tell themselves, mm-hmm. like, wow, like, this is truly mine. Um, you know, every, not not every, every situation, but, you know, a good number of situations where these when you when you finally get the keys to your house and you just like this is mine, it's such a, a gratification that comes along with it. But like my mission is if we yeah. are if you're my client and you're my family and everything. Now that's not always the case. You know what I'm saying? Some people say give me into that give me into that home, sir, and go on by your business. All right, cool. But <laughs> uh, outside of that, man, like I, I really I really make it a move point to um 
to to make people to meet to to bring people up to my level or assess the situation to where it's just like hey we're gonna get through it together like i have a uh, I have a contract right now that is supposed to be closing on the 29th, so 17 days from now. And uh, this young lady's testimony, man, is so much, that's so, 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 just so uh, lovable. But, you know, it's just really about seeing it through. And sometimes, man, you, you know, in this loan officer hat, man, you are a, you're, a, you're, a, you're a therapist, you're an encourager, you know what I'm saying? You're a shoulder to lean mm-hmm. on. You know, you're a gospel at times and everything like that. Like you, you all kinds of things. You have to become a friend. You have to become a family. You have to become a disciplinarian in, mm-hmm. a, in certain things because, like, it's different levels for anything. Like, and that's why I said, like, it's it's so it's so much fulfillment being in this position because I'm able to connect with people on a, on, a, on a, another level. You know, yeah. I'm able to see. Uh, certain things and such like for example one of my best stories that I have in all my career is um, last year I was doing a uh, a seminar in my hometown in Marshall and I was uh, I was supposed to be on the panel and everything but I was running late like Mm -hmm. late I was running late and meaning that I had to you know basically travel to Marshall so like two and a half hour drive and um i had to come to my office to get my banner and to get everything and like i'm i'm pissed i'm just pissed because like i'm running behind time i know better it's not professional da 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 and um i came into the office got my banner and i was like well i need to go ahead and gas up so down the street from my office there's there's three gas stations all in one little sector it's qt shell and uh, and uh, what's the name? Seven Eleven and everything, mm-hmm. right? And, and um, <laughs> so I'm cheap. I ain't gonna lie to you. Fruit, <laughs> probably for what it is. I'm fruit. That's what it is. <laughs> so anyway, the usually QT gas is a little bit cheaper and everything, but for some reason the Shell gas station was ten cent lower than the QT. So I was just like, well, I'm gonna stop at the Shell real quick because I'm I'm going to get these savings, right? <laughs> and um. Man, I, I walked. I walked to the. I walked in. It was this uh, lady that was outside, and I spoke to her. I said, "Hey, man, what's going on? How you doing?" And everything, right? So I came back out, paid for my gas, came back out, and um, she was like, "Well, I saw your shirt and everything. Like, who do you work for?" And I told her at the time who I work. I work for a different company, but um, I was like, "Hey, this, yeah, that's what I work for." And I'm a loan officer, and she just started boohooing. When I say boohooing, just crying at the pump. I'm wow. talking about like my wife is in the car with me. I'm literally holding this lady. She is crying in my in my shoulder and everything. And I was like, it's gonna be all right, tell me the scenario. And she was just basically like, Yeah, you know, we're building this four hundred thousand dollar house. You know, the the lender said that it can't get us through, blah, 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 and everything, right? And I was like, Well, you know, I can't make you any promises or anything like that. However, I can assure you, like, let me take a look at it. Let me take a look at it, see what it looks like and everything, and I can see what I can do and get done, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, um, basically, I ended, she didn't contact me right away and everything because, you know, us guys, her husband, this yeah. is my dude now, but he was like, nah, <laughs> we're going to go through somebody else. You just read, you just met somebody around me at the gas station, da 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 right? So, Two weeks later, uh, I hit her and I said, hey, it's checking in on you, da 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 da, da. She is like, Johnny, uh, you know, the people that we reached out to, you know what I'm saying, they still haven't got back in contact with me, so we're going to fill out the application, right? Mm-hmm. So long story, I was able to close them on their home and everything, right? And, like, when I said that was my family, like, they invited me to the house, the, the grand opening and everything, and, like, uh, uh, sister was just like, this is my brother. It's my brother from now on. Like, it don't matter because he, he got us through, but it was just like, nah, if I was, if I, I look back at that time, if I, if the things that didn't occur, you know what I'm saying, when it comes to patience and everything, right? If the things didn't occur like they did, then I never would have received a blessing of, you know, running into, you know, my client at the time and everything. And, you know, that's where, like, now in life, I, I learned to trust God even when it's so uncomfortable. Yeah. It's, it's, it, it becomes a it becomes a, a test of faith 
and everything. But like, you know, God word, God's word never returns back and forth and everything. And he 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 assures us. He's just like, hey, hey dog, hey, it's getting kinda hot. It's getting it, what, what, what we doing. You know, but yeah. um man, he's definitely something, man, that he's always gonna show up on time, on time for sure. Absolutely. Look, that he is just a indication that you're being refined. That's all. That's all it is. It's like you is he's refining you. He's getting you ready for whatever it is. And he's exposing you to so many different types of people because you know, exposure leads like exposure leads to expansion. So it's like you um building these relationships and maintaining them will create an overflow effect for you and everybody attached to you, right? So um tell me a little bit about your family and how you know getting married and being connected to your wife has changed your life because i know i told you when you got married i was like your life is about to be totally different everything is about to be better she gonna multiply everything and i love it so tell me about how how she's changed your life man so my uh my story man is one of those things where um you know you you find out over time that things all come together for some mm-hmm. reason, but you just wish you can avoid certain things from happening. Right? Yeah. And I'm, I don't know if they would have happened if I didn't go through those things. I don't know. You know, I don't, I don't determine that, but, uh, my wife, man, she's a, she's a realtor broker. Um, she, she's also, she's a Delta as well. Um, she is, she's truly my backbone and everything. And, you know, in relationships nowadays, people don't really edify, you know, the the partnership that goes along in relationships. Like, you know, you got to depend on this person when it's hard, when you go through the, the bad, cause everybody want to be in the good. The good is something that yeah, you might have, you might have more good days than bad days, but like you're not exempt from the bad days that happen. Right. Yeah. And, and the reality is, is that, you know, what my wife has, has uh, truly been, she's just truly been like a testament of strength and everything. And, you know, to really just see like, Oh, wow. You know, we going through it. I was, we here. We here yeah. together and everything. And, you know, I'd rather be here with you, you know what I'm saying, in this situation than, you know, anywhere else and everything, right? So uh, just that man, everything about it is just is, she's a glowing spirit, man. She is a she has a heart for people. She has mm-hmm. a heart for kids, she has a heart for, you know, the ministry. She has a heart for God, man. She's a she's a, a woman of God for sure. Um, you know, we butt heads, we butt heads and everything like that. We we disagree, but we we try what we learn along the way is that man, we try to get back on track as soon as possible because we know when there's a real, you know what I'm saying, when we're off, everything just kind of falls in balance and everything, right? Yeah. So with with everything that she is, man, like I I, I can't function without my lady and everything, you know. Yeah. I'm wrong. It be day, it be day. I'm like, hey, I'm, I'm. Let me, let me get, give me a sec, give me a sec, and everything. But <laughs> you know, the whole totality of everything is that, man. When you actually have somebody that, um, that you're bonded with and everything, and that you walk in this life with, man, it's everything. Uh, I had a, a uncle that just, uh, just passed recently, and um, something that that blessed me about at his funeral that uh, him and my aunt were married sixty six years. 66 years she he passed he was 92 so yeah they was they got together wow. and, uh, and the thing about that 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 really just shocked me was just like man you know people people think that and i'm not excusing for any kind of behavior and everything like that but like 66 years you, you went through some things and a lot years. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> yeah, it might never be known exactly what you went through, but you know you went through some things, and the persistence and resilience for you know them to be able to say, "Nah, we're gonna stick this out to death through us part." And you know, I just when I when I look at mine, I'm just like, "Oh no, nah, dog! I really said that to death through us part." Like, yeah, that's that's it. I don't know how long that is going to be, but, you know, hopefully, uh, God said the same, that it's going to stretch out, you know, and 
we live a long, good life together. And, you know, just seeing how my uncle, man, like the, the, the touch and um, the placement that he had over people and what the influence that he had, you know, that's all we can ask for because, you know, our, our time here is, we don't, it's unknown. We don't know when uh, the day or the hour. However, when it is time to get up out of here, you know, you want to, you want to, be able, man, to, and I always say, you want to be able to be flapping wings up there and look down, you know what I'm saying, that, you know, people, people, you really impacted somebody, and somebody can really say that, man, because I experienced this person, man, I'm, I'm different because of my encounters with this person and everything, and, like, no, they truly, you know, they truly cared about me, and that's, that's just what I'm trying to do on a, on a, on an everyday basis, man, just, you know, just let people know, man, I, I, no, I really do, I really truly care about people, man, like, um, when people are, intro, I'm, I'm a, I say that I'm an extroverted introvert and everything, but the extroverted yeah. part is, like, I love, I love people, I love being around people, I love being around different facets of people, I love being around the bougie folks, I love being around the ratchet folks, I love yeah. being around the extroverted <laughs> like, you know, it doesn't matter who it is and what, like, it doesn't matter if I went to school with you. It doesn't matter if I played ball with you. It doesn't matter if I just met you the other day. You know what I'm saying? It's always going to be love between us. Yeah. I, I always say that I want to leave here empty, right? So, like, I, I don't ever want to take anything with me. I, everything I have, I want to give it out, right? And so that makes me have a legacy mindset. And I'm like, even though I don't have children, I feel like everybody, every kid that I get to touch or every person I get to touch, um, it's my duty to like leave them feeling full as well. Like, like I said, the overflow effect, right? So I want to ask you, when it comes to legacy, what do you want the FOB's name to hold? Like, what do you want people to associate with your name? Um, because that affects your children and just everybody attached to you. So what do you want that to mean? Man, um, I think when it's, when it's all said and done, uh, I want to, I want, I want the name man to be so, so much of a name of greatness to where that the, the stamp is seen. You have physical proof of seeing the stamp and everything, right? And whatever, whatever that is, I don't know exactly what that is right now, but like, I want the stamp to be there for my kids to, um, Eventually, man, they sit down just like my daddy was everything that I thought he was and everything, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and, you know, that the fact that they can live on that and say that, uh, you know, I'm a Fives, man. Like, uh, you know, I, I come from good stock and everything, right? And that that story is a, a story of resilience, a story of persistence, a story of patience, a story of strength, a story of, you know, calculated moves, um, you know, everything that goes along with it. Like I, I would, my story, my life is already a book, you know, love it is. And we, all, we always talk about, well, I should write a book and everything, but like. <laughs> you gonna write one. You are writing a book. I had to get close to the mic. You gonna write a book. <laughs> you know, that's just what the name is and everything. And I think it just, it's so, it's broad, but it's specific as well. So, you know, everything that comes along with that, like I'm, um, I'm not going to say that I want much and everything because I do, but when it comes to like impact and everything that, you know, people know that at the bare minimum, if, they, if there's one thing that they, um, if they have to say, you know what I'm saying about Johnny Fox is that, that he truly cared. He truly cared about me. He truly, you know, you felt it, you know what I'm saying? You felt the love and everything, even when we agreed or disagreed, you know, you, we, I knew that I can call him. He was going to be there. So yeah that's what i say absolutely i'm gonna tell you one of my favorite things our experiences uh when i think about you is like seeing your billboard in forest hill was a very <laughs> very 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 proud moment for me as if i'm acting like i'm i'm on the billboard or something but no like seeing my seeing my people like win or seeing my people uh get the exposure that they deserve or the you know it just is a prideful thing. Like it, it made me very proud of you, <laughs> like um, to see you represented in your area where you come from, where you where you were raised, um, and you were in the. That was strategic marketing, right like there. <laughs> hey, it 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 was good though. No, but for real, um, you you rocking the Forest Hill hat, and um, like I'm on this mission to help students, student athletes from Texas, to uh, create a standard for what it means to be from Texas. 
So I want I want you to tell me like what does it mean to be from Forest Hill? And like maybe tell me a person or a moment where you felt like they helped you to become who you are now. Oh, uh, so man, Texas is what it is. Everything is bigger in Texas, right? But like Yeah. Man, you from the if you from the from the state, man, no matter where what section it is, like you 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 operate in pride on that. Like, you know, yeah. we, we do big things in Texas, man. But more specifically from Fort Worth, being from the sector that I am, and I have so much pride and love for the city, man. Like, um I mean, I, I don't because we always get compared to Dallas and everything like that, and I'm not gonna slander Dallas today. But uh I will. You know, I'm just playing. <laughs> I'm just playing. Man, man, being man, being from the city, man, it's just everything because I, I feel like you know, no matter what you know, what sector you're from in the city, man, it's all love anywhere. And you know, no matter what high school you went to, uh, or whatever, man, like you want to see people win. Yeah. Um, I think if I had to just really pinpoint um someone that like just really it helped me along the way. Man, there's so many people and everything is crazy. Um I would have to say like my and I would have to say my my childhood friends that, you know, that really grew up into, you know, they're still my brothers and everything like that to this day. But like they really picked me up and carried me along the way. Um, just a kid, man, from from the east and everything, and I was in my shy set. They really didn't talk that much, but like they really brought me out and they really challenged me and everything. You know, what I'm saying they really, you know, uh, they saw the fives before everybody else knew, you know, J fives and everything, yeah. right? Like they saw me before and they was just uh, they took my hand, man, and just basically say, Nah, nah, like you're gonna be one of us, like, like type of like that, right? So. From there, man, like, I, you know, we got many legends that came from the city, man, uh, especially, like, as far as football-wise, D-Will. Yeah, uh, yeah. Like that. So even seeing, like, what he did in, uh, um, in the Broncos and everything, from him going to OK State to, you know, him going to the Broncos and everything, to see that that came from our community was big. But, like, just in Very everything big. in general. Yeah, just in every man in general, man, we had so many big names that came out the out the school to go to the next level and everything. So, man, I had many and plenty of examples in front of me, but like, you know, I I, I think I have to really just go back to like my mama and everything, right? My mom yeah. was just really the person that just to influence me, man, and just like. You know, from her, like now, don't get me wrong. Me and her do not see eye to eye all the time. <laughs> we don't, but that's my that's my girl. That's my girl and everything. And just for her being able to sacrifice and do the things that she did, man. I just hopefully, man, one day, man, that I can be able to just repay her. You know, for just a little bit, just a token of just a big appreciation. Like, hey, you know, it ain't much, but here, thank you. You know, what I'm saying mm-hmm. thank you for everything. And so, you know, if that lines up with what God has for me and everything, and that's in something that's around, and you'll see it through and we'll get it done. Yeah. You're already making her proud by the way that you're living. That's already repaying her too. She's seeing it, like she's seeing it in you right now in real time. So you're paying her back in different ways. I know men like to have either something physical to hand, you know, that's just, yeah, it's just, yeah. we're just different in that sense, but you are yeah. repaying her by making sure that you saying yes every day, you showing up and you saying yes and you doing the work. So that's what that's matters. Um, so my last question will be about the stuff that you got coming up. Tell me about the urban network affair and everything that you got going on. Um, so this is an initiative that my wife and I, man, that we are really, um, uh, you know, passionate about. So, um, and and what this bring about, uh, what this came about, man, is that I was in Dallas, right? I was in Dallas, and uh, I like my fair brothers and my, my guys that I know out there in in Dallas, man. They know I hate Dallas, you know what I'm saying? And I hate Dallas from a standpoint like traffic bad. You yes. Know, everybody feel like they somebody out there. What the what what the what, right? Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> I was at real estate. I was at this real estate event, right? And uh one of my guys is just like bro and you you from the phone like why are you even out here well why why are you trying to make a presence out here um when there's not a real presence in for work you know what i'm saying like should you be yeah. studying like taking up your home and everything and i was like bro 
He's all right. You know what I'm saying? He's all right. And then I and I really start like don't get me wrong, there are some some dudes, man, that are, you know, or women and women and men that are taking the initiative in the city and such, right? Mm-hmm. But uh what my wife and I are focused on are bringing the professionals together and everything and bringing the people that want to take initiative together. Like, uh, I know you heard of Mr. Cloud and everything, right? So Mr. Cloud is, Mr. Cloud is a, uh, is a, uh, a networking, uh, event that's in city of Dallas that's surrounded by tech and everything. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and just the, the ability that they have to, uh, to generate like, a uh, uh, a reoccurring amount of people and such, mm-hmm. right? Um, just that that in general, man. Like I, I haven't seen that out here in the city. You know, I haven't seen a lot of places out in the city, man, to where somebody can go. Grown folks, us grown, cause we grown now. We grown, 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 but grown. Like, us grown <laughs> folks, us grown folks can go out there and just have a good time and not worry about the riffraff and everything. Because if you're traveling to Dallas from Fort Worth, it's because you primarily think that the restaurants are better out there. You know, and you know, in some cases you can have an argument, but then also too, you want to go experience the nightlife and everything, right? So, you know, I'm not a promoter or nothing like that, and you know, I don't want to give out the illusion that I am. However, um, I am, you know, I am uh, passionate about you know finding opportunities within the city to make the city back our own because I stay in Arlington right now, but you know, five minutes or three minutes, I can be you know in the phone in the city limits. Yeah. So you know, I'm 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 very passionate, man. It's just about creating opportunities in Fort Worth, Arlington too, as well, and just creating a network. And I I, I think that it is coming together. I think I see it, you know, a little bit more every day that's coming together. And it's just that, okay, let me pinpoint these things and put these people into a room and be able to touch these people one by one. And you know, in time. If I put enough seeds down and everything, man, the harvest is going to uh, have longevity. So that's where the the, the Urban Network Affair um, um, was birthed from. We're going to be doing one uh, one networking event per quarter that's going to end up leading on to our citywide ball that we're going to be doing at the Ridgely Theater uh, in November. So that's going to be that's going to be big. It's going to be that's big. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so we, you know, uh, we need to have a big year. You know, we need to have a big year for sure, man, to pull that off. Uh, we're going to have some of the city's finest that's going to be out there. And then also, too, some uh, some major uh, um, artists, you know what I'm saying, from the fourth there were uh, uh, born of the the, the, era, the the area to be out. So, you know, all this is, is just, it came from an idea, an idea that's saying, okay, well, let me see if we can go, you know, book this venue and okay, oh, we can book the venue. All right, mm-hmm. now. So let's start throwing this out. And then, you know, we only slide like 40 people to be in, but like, I, I don't even think that me and my wife is, uh, my wife and I have uh, like publicized it. Um, uh, social media, no, she just released it the other day, but like, we're already like, I think I checked this morning, we're probably like 34. Uh, 40 tickets, but we are, um, but there's no, no, there's no, no, what's the name, no minimum or nothing like that. Uh, no yeah. maximum, I'm sorry, maximum. So it's like, hey, if you feel like this is something that you need to be at and everything come through and we just want to see, man, what we can all do, what the city can show up. And so that's going to be everything for me and everything. And it's just going to be, um, yeah, that's it, man. Come out and support, you know, we, we, we're building something. Yeah. That's amazing. I'm I'm happy to hear that everything is coming full circle because, like I said earlier, everything you've been exposed to, you're yeah. exuding it now, and you're using yeah. every skill, yeah. every skill that you picked up, you're using it. That's why we have to go through yeah. the process. <laughs> so yeah. that's why we got to go through the process. But yeah, well, I appreciate you, bro. Thank you so much for coming on. And I I know that it's gonna be you planted a lot of seeds on this one podcast. So I know. <laughs> Keep doing the work hey. though. You got it. I appreciate you. I love you so much. Thank you for having me. Love you too. Love you too. All right. All right. Talk Bye. to you.